train uh, when we pulled when we come up we were on a four we were on a four blink code on the board indicating that uh, we were on high limit the unit was out on high limit so uh, we just looked at the instructions here inside and it said uh, what our blink code was and uh, so we as soon as I realized that I knew we started to test for safeties so I tested the uh, reverse reverse switch there we just jumped it out and then uh, this one here Tested that one, the manual reset for the flame rollout. That one was good. And uh, ended up, we seen some wires that went back here. And uh, and there it is. It's a manual, it's an uh, automatic reset, high limit overload. And uh, there's our tubes there. Let me get my flashlight, we'll get some footage. Bear with me guys here. Let me get my flashlight. We're just gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect these tubes. Because of this being bad, we can assume that it's had a fair amount of use. Now it may be bad just due to time, but what we're going to do is we're going to check, see the seam? That seam is where the rolls come together. And you can see the tube's not rusting, but the seam is. That's what we want to look for. We want to look for that seam. We want to look all the way down it on both sides. And we want to make sure that that seam is good. And there's no rust in every tube. Every tube is going to have a seam. So, I'm going to check them out real good. And uh, before, we, before we just pop a new one of these in, we're going to make sure that nothing's caused it. And uh, make sure that everything's okay. If we just replace this, and then we got a problem somewhere else making this trip out, then we're just going to have problems later on. It's going to be a callback. Customer's not going to be happy. So, all right. And we had to pull the fan motor just to get in here. But it was real easy, believe it or not. Uh, we got a variable motor on this one. This is a variable XL14C train. And uh, believe it or not, one screw here held the whole assembly in. Because you got the track on top and bottom that basically holds it, but uh, and one ground screw that went from the motor to the to ground. So 
really really man easy train is just the world's easiest about this I mean really one screw guys look at this right here one screw and this thing is ready to come out and one one ground screw here so we found out what's going on I'm gonna give you a report back on that heat exchanger guys all right all right Our heat exchanger tubes tested good. And uh, she's got a lot of rust on her, but she doesn't have any holes. So we're gonna let her roll for another year or two. It's a 2007 model, August 2007. So it's got roughly about six years on it, a little over six. And uh, so it was about as expected. Um, I didn't expect the tubes to be bad. So that was good for the customer. Heat exchanger was good. And um, now the customer did have a Merv 16 filter in line. And most of the time you only see these filters in commercial situations because it's a full five inch pleat and most of the time this is only commercial when you got that but this is a in really high-end homes train systems that were installed and, and things like that the, the uh, train uh, installers like to put really the best filter they can in there the problem with that is I mean, you think, oh, yeah, five inch pleat. It's a 16 by 25 by five, guys. Merv 16. So, you know, that's excellent air quality. Okay, but what is it doing? It is greatly restricting the airflow. And I may be wrong. I don't know for sure. I may be wrong, but I got a hunch. That this, that this high temperature cutoff by metal relay here that was bad was going in and going out and going in and going out during the heating. So we really can't find anything else causing the relay to we can't call it, we can't find another problem that would have caused that relay to go bad uh, so other than the filter I asked him about the filter and he said that the filter had not been installed in about two years a new one so they didn't write the date on the filter I pulled the filter out tried to check it um, and Excuse me, guys. Um, the filter looked dirty. I, I, I put it up to the sun, started tried to look through it, and it was dark. So I got a feeling that it wasn't flowing enough air because the filter was clogged up, and because of that, temperature got too hot inside the unit, and the unit that, that relay was cutting in and out, and uh, made that relay go bad. Um, these are very, very rare. They go bad. Um, only when you see them go bad like this, when they just don't work at all, is when they've been overworked. When they've when they've had some work that they've been doing. And, um, in normal sequence of operation of the unit, this switch would not operate. Period. Uh, as far as function. I mean, it's going to operate passing the electricity through until it cuts out, but the, the action of the switch is not going to be initiated until there is a problem somewhere in the system. So that is the reason why these, these switches very rarely go bad, is because their function is hardly ever used. And it's only when there's a problem somewhere else 
if these are you this function the switch is used and then the switch gets wore out so that's why it was important for us to determine what other problems there were with the system causing this switch to go back. Same kind of principle, just to give you a quick example. Um, same principle with say a transformer, guys. You go into a unit, you ain't got nothing on the thermostat. Thermostats run on the unit voltage, you don't have nothing on the thermostat, the unit's not coming on, nothing. Well, you got high voltage going to it, but you don't have any low. You find out transformer's bad. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to put on another transformer and turn the unit on. What's going to happen? Transformer's going to fart. New one. And you're going to be like, oh, man. Something's causing this to happen. So, uh, you got, just like on that call, you got to figure out... Before you replace the transformer, what is causing the transformer to go bad? It's usually either a problem with the wire between the low voltage wire between the outdoor unit and the thermostat, the indoor unit, the thermostat, the indoor unit, and the outdoor unit. So, somewhere in the low voltage wire, usually there's a problem. Or a problem with the thermostat. Something that's 24 volt operated, it's in the 24 volt circuit, uh, it's going to be a problem. So, you know, you got to fix that before you replace the transformer. So, anyway, uh, this is Saturday, nothing's open. I tried to call Ari Michaels uh, here in Huntsville. They're usually pretty good about being able to open up and you know, sell you some parts and stuff, but he couldn't get in touch with the manager, could get... <sighs> oh man, I don't know what's going on guys, sorry. Uh, the manager um, couldn't get in touch with any of the other guys, he's in Florida right now. He couldn't get in touch with his local guys here that run the truck or work the counter or anything, so. <laughs> it's Saturday. Yo!